Well, praise the Lord. Glory to His name. He is worthy of praise. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Glory to God. Hallelujah. If you turn with me this morning to Ruth chapter 2, I want to continue where we had left off. Um, we began the the uh, second chapter of Ruth, um, finding out that Naomi had a kinsman. His name was Boaz, not related to her directly, but through the marriage of being married to Amalek. And so therefore, it really, because of the Moses law that she actually had the right or the opportunity to be redeemed or the one to marry Boaz. But because of her own mindset, her own choices, she decided that it wasn't for her. All she could see was her bitter disappointments and how it had affected her life. Amen. And so we saw... Also, uh, so that was set set out, and we saw in verse 2 where um, Ruth had a hunger to go after, right, to go after a mature word, or she wanted to go out for it. You know, she wanted to go out for what? An ear of corn, right? Or to glean the ears of corn, right? She she was after a whole nother dimension. She was after the maturity of the kingdom. A lot of folks just, you know, they like to just have, you know, just enough of Jesus to give them a satisfied conscience. But there's a whole nother type of people that God has chosen for himself. And the first one, uh, the, the first thing that we see in verse 2 is Ruth is submissive. Submit. A lot of folks, they do a good form of talking, but they don't know how to, well, I didn't like your answer, Naomi, or I didn't like your answer, preacher, or I didn't like your answer, whoever, Right. But uh, Ruth is submissive and Ruth is hungry. So she asked for permission. Naomi granted it. And the reason she asked for permission was because she was hungry for something that was beyond herself. Amen. Hallelujah. And so she went after it. All right. And I I told you this the other night. I said, the mark of a spirit-filled person is someone who is submissive and hungry for the Word of God and the things of the Spirit. I'm a firm believer in the litmus test. Watch, both Naomi and Ruth, not not Naomi, both Orpah and Ruth said, we'll go with you. They both had the same words, the same statement But Orpah went back, and Ruth put her action, or put her words, I mean, into action. She did what she said she was going to do. Amen? I always believe this true integrity is you are what you say you are. We live in a day and age where everybody likes the Facebook. They're pretentious inside. But on the outside, they like the glossy look of how great I am. But God's after a people who are submissive and hungry. They are not concerned about their own selves, their own lives. Amen? Okay, so now, verse 3, let's go. Verse 3, all right? And she went, and I'll just put this there, she went out. Where did she go out from? She left Naomi, didn't she? Are you with me? She got out past all of Naomi's stuff, 
all of her baggage, all that she had, she said, I'm going out from this. I want to get beyond. Now, some people can live right in that and be perfectly happy, perfectly fine, and they can even call it God. Oh, peace, 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 love of God. But look, it isn't the kingdom of God, is it? Remember, Naomi was only restored in what? Part. But God's after what? Fullness. He who endures to the halfway point, three quarters point, to the end. You have to go all the way, don't you? He who overcomes. Well, I did all these things. We already have a picture of that, right? Master, I gave up. I, I do all these things. What do I lack? I think his question was rhetorical in his own mind. He thought he did it all, didn't he? I really do. This is the way a lot of people remember Peter. Peter said, Lord, we gave up everything. No, you didn't. Because then he went right down to where most folks live. Unless you hate your father, your mother, your children, and all those things, it's the very thing where God checks, right? Husbands, wives, all that kind of stuff. Well, why would God ever do that? He's trying to change us to be like him, isn't he? Hallelujah. Everybody say praise the Lord. Right, amen. Ruth was submissive and hungry. But look, she went out and came. Can I use the word in? Right, she went out and now she came in. He takes us out to do what? Bring us in. He took them out of Egypt to bring them into the what? Promised land. Was it a direct route? Could have been. But they decided to what? Play merry-go-round, didn't they? Ring around the rosy. Whatever you want to talk, they went in circles or cycles for how many years? 40 years. Kind of reminds me of that old story, Jeremiah's potter's wheel, right? Oh, Lord, make me this way. And it starts spinning. The potter's wheel starts spinning. And what happens? Oh, Lord, take me off. I'm getting dizzy on this merry-go-round, right? So look, she went out and she came in, and watch this, and gleaned in the field after the reapers. Now, I think that's a pretty cool statement. She gleaned in the field after the reapers. Now look, Ruth followed, if we went to verse 2, what's it say? Look at verse 2. She said, let me go now to the field and glean in the ears of corn after him. Now, there's a lot of people going to struggle with this part right here, but watch this. She followed him by following the reapers. Are you with me? She followed him by following the reapers. Are you with me? Now, reapers, watch this. I like this because reapers, what do reapers do? They what? Cut down, right? The word reaper means to cut down, cut off, right? They followed, or she followed him by following the reapers. The reapers, watch. Look, can I, I want to rephrase it because I want to, uh, it reminded me of, of a prophetic word that, um, you know, we had in our lives, end time harvesters. A reaper is a harvester, right? Someone who harvests. End time harvesters, right? Are you with me? We live in a day and age that we don't think we should follow anyone. We'll just do our own thing and walk our own way. Do you know what we've done as a nation? We've turned our backs on God. And then when we have mass shootings like we've had in the last 24 hours and actually in the last week, what do we say? Why all the violence? We want a godly world without God in the church. Uh, 
I love what Paul wrote. He says, but none of these things move me. They don't shake me up. God's got a plan. He's got a purpose. He said, wars and rumors of war, all these things will continue. This won't change. And actually, he says, look, he says, because iniquity abounds, the love of many will do what? Grow worse. All right. Do I like it? Of course I don't. But it doesn't change what God's going to do, what God is doing, I should say. That's what I really should say. Are you with me? But look, she went in the field and she followed the reapers, right? And the reapers, I, I just told you, are, are, are to me end time harvesters. But I'll tell you what they're really a good picture of. Are you ready for this? They're a picture of the body of Christ. They're many members. They're out reaping in the field. Are you with me? They're reaping in the field. And what are they reaping? Ears of corn, right? And we know it might not have been the corn, corn, corn. It's, you know, grain, fruit, whatever you want to call it. But they were out reaping. What is the fruit of what God is after? He's after a mature kingdom, a kingdom of people, right? He's after what does God want to harvest, right? He doesn't want to harvest dead old, dried up, nothing. He wants a people who are what? A praise to him. An expression to him. It's more than just a song. It's more than just a message. It is a life. It is a lifestyle. It isn't some, something that people you know, try to mimic or, look, it flows out of the realm of the spirit. It just is life. And Ruth said, hey, look, I'm leaving this and I'm going into this. I'm going to follow him by following his See, this is why people don't get this, but this is why God, look, look, I'm telling you, people don't believe this, not just in this church, but in all kinds of churches, that God will take a family, a people, and he'll start joining people to them. The problem with most of those people that get joined, not all, not all, not all, a lot, is somehow or another, they never see the sovereignty or the providence of God. And what he's trying to do is to get people to follow his reapers so that they can become reapers, so that more can, so that God can bring about the reality of what he's after. Oh, yeah. This is what Ruth was after the fullness of the kingdom. The mature word of God, right? What is the mature word of God? Anybody want to tell me? It's a what? It's the thinking mind of God. Absolutely. Watch this. It's the word made flesh. In other words, you are what you say you are. You manifest who he is in and through his word. It becomes a living reality. Like Samuel, not one of his words fell to the ground. Hallelujah. It was producing exactly what he was saying. Amen. Hallelujah. She went out. She came in. She gleaned in the field after the reapers. And her hap was to light on a part of the field belonging to Boaz. All right. Now, I think it's pretty cool right here. What he's trying to show us is this. Are you ready? Now, the word hap, okay, it means, now, if we're religious, we won't understand all this. And this is why a lot of folks go off in this dimension. But look, it's a word that means good luck or happy. All right? And, the, and if you look at the real Hebrew rendering of this, it means her chance chanced. It was by chance. She just by chance went into this field. Are you with me? Watch, I'll put it like this. You think, Corey, it was just by chance you went and played dodgeball one night? Are you with me? Do you think it was just by chance, Tiffany, in the 10th grade, you sat next to a tall, lanky kid? 
You think Ruth just showed up in this field by chance, by luck, by happenstance? Are you with me? Do you think it was just by chance? And when, look, I love the word chance. If you look it up, one of the things is opportunities. And watch, if God makes an opportunity, the question is, do we take advantage of that opportunity or do we squander it through time? And ultimately, what was God really after? Look, it wasn't whether you were going to ever, uh, you know, play dodgeball or, you know, get married and have children and all those things. And God would do all those things. But ultimately, what God was trying to get you to do is follow his reaper so you could become a reaper, that you could become an end time harvester. Watch this. I'm way ahead of myself, but they didn't just show up in any field. They showed up in Boaz's field. There's a whole lot of field out there. There's a whole lot of churches out there that you could have showed up in, but the ultimate intention of God, his sovereignty and his providence brought, to, brought you to a place like this so that you could understand a mature word of his kingdom so that you could become, even more importantly, become the mature word, the corn from his field. There's a whole lot of people preaching Jesus, but they don't really want Jesus. They want their lifestyle. They don't want his presence. They want his presence. They want his blessings. And it doesn't take very long to find out. Really, it doesn't take very long to find out where we stand in that. God help us. You think those folks that went to Walmart yesterday thought some of them would never go home? No. Guaranteed not. Out on the town having a good time down in Ohio? No. Are you with me? And look, God, look, we have nothing to be afraid of and nothing to fear. But I'm telling you this, the thing that we should be afraid of and fear is fear the Lord. That we would, like Paul said, not become a castaway. Come short of his rest. Come short of his purpose. Come short of his ultimate intention. Amen? Uh, I like this. Look, we know that she didn't just show up in this field by accident, did she? How many know that God led her? to this very moment in time. Not any old field, Beck. No. It wasn't an accident. And the thing that I find very cool about Ruth is her attitude never changed, that she thought she was someone, but she remained submissive, submitted to the Word, hungry for the Word, Are you with me? How cool is that picture? I told you I love this. I, I repeat this over and over and over and over and over and over again. That God, 4,000 years ago, took the canvas of life and painted a picture of real life experiences so that you and I in the 21st century could relate to it spiritually speaking. That look, God wants a people. Everybody say this with me. Submitted and hungry for him. I don't need to submit to you. What, what are you talking about? The Bible says, no, no, look, look, watch, watch this. Who's the head? Christ. He put it in this order. Christ, husbands, submit to Christ. Wives, submit to them. He doesn't even list children because its nature shows us who's in charge there. But watch this. Then he turns right around and says, be submitted to one another. Litmus test. School teachers. Just because a kid says he does his homework doesn't mean he did it. Are you with me? Where's the proof? And God's always proven us, trying us, testing us. What? Those who he loves, he does what? He disciplines, trains, tries, proves, doesn't he? 
What's the alternative to that? If he doesn't discipline me, doesn't train me, lets me do whatever I want, lets me to think, he says, you're a bastard. That's a crude word. I'll nice it up and say, it just makes us illegitimate. Christians. Are you with me? God's after something, isn't he? He is. He's after something. He's after the mature corn of the word. He's after the maturity of a people. He's after his fruit. Watch. Remaining. We read that the other day, didn't we? He's after. Look, I love this. In eternal presence. An eternal oneness. Look, it's not just an automatic. It's just going to happen because we intellectually have been trained and understand some stuff, right? We know what he's after, right? Naomi knew the word. She understood the message, right? She knew that there was a kinsman redeemer, but it didn't help her one bit, did it? No. She was too busy in her own mind thinking about her own life, good or bad. This is why Paul had to write to you and I in the book of Thessalonians, quench not the spirit. Listen to the Holy Ghost. Listen to what he has to say. Amen. Hallelujah. We know it didn't just happen, right? It was providence. It was God's sovereignty. Right? But it says, and your hap was too light. It's the same word light. It means the chance light upon by accident or bring about upon, right? The field belonging to Boaz. You and I, let's make sure we land in Boaz's field. <laughs> Are you with me? Let's not land in another field. Wow, look, there's corn over here. There's reapers over here. There's a master or a servant or, or, or a leader over here. But is it... Boaz's field. What do you think God's more concerned about right now? Fixing everything or bringing a people to maturity? No doubt about it. Because you and I would have stopped all the nonsense already by now. And the saddest thing to me is we live in such an isolated, insulated world that unless it's happening to us, we let it only affect our emotions, but it never truly changes us. Are you all right? Follow the reapers in Boaz's field. There's a lot of people reaping a lot of stuff. And a lot of people following, they follow the wrong reapers. Are you with me? They don't care. But look, if you're stuck in another field, may God help you. Here we go. To light upon in the part of the field belonging to Boaz, who was of the kindred of Amalek. Amen. And remember what Amalek's name meant? Anybody remember? Watch this. Look, I, I like this part right here, right? What did Jesus call the field, the world? The field, right? Look, he bought the whole thing, didn't he? But there are only sections of the world or the field and certain fields that he's working in. Are you with me? Got awful quiet. He's only working in his fields, right? Why is he? He's not working. Are you with me? Here we go. And Amalek's name means, right? God is my king. The kingdom is the king's domain. This is what Boaz did. He ruled his own, are you with me? Field, right? So Ruth went out. She came in. And Jesus led her to that part of the world that now is now is experientially the property, he owns it, doesn't he? Of Jesus, hallelujah. And what are those fields? They're local churches in which he, 
How do you know if it's his field or his church? Is he Lord and King over it? Is he Lord and King over your life? Just to say yes is the easy answer, isn't it? It's looking at your decisions, my decisions, our decisions, and our direction in life. What's the thing that's always on your lips? What are your desires? What are you chasing? I can tell you the older you get, the less things really matter in this life. What really matters, if your heart is towards him, what really matters, watch, look, is what he's after. This is what Jesus said. You can gain the whole world and what? Miss out on the kingdom. And what is the kingdom again? I just told you, watch, when he's Lord and King of our lives. I'm going to ask you the question. Is he Lord and King of your life? I mean, really, truly, is he Lord and King? Does he influence every decision you make? It doesn't mean you won't make bad mistakes and make bad decisions. You just have to, I just have to open up our ears to make sure. And sometimes he'll let us make dumb decisions. Are you with me? But it's what we do. Do we learn wisdom? Stay the course, stay focused. Keep pressing toward the mark of the prize of the high calling, the ascended life of what he's after. Watch, if we live in the spirit, what does he tell us to do? Walk in it. And like any impart child, immature, right? You're going to unfortunately make mistakes. It's but what we do with those mistakes. Turn with me real quick, Numbers 14. I want to show you this quick little verse. This is what God is after, to be Lord. Verse 21, but as truly as I live, all the earth shall be filled with the what? Glory of the Lord. I just listened to a message my dad just shared, and he always loves to repeat it. The glory of God isn't someplace over there or somewhere down in the future. The glory of God is the what? The thinking mind of God. We have the mind of Christ. So what does he say? Put it on. What does that mean? Begin to wear it. Begin to express it. And it begins with Christ-centeredness. Are you with me on that? It begins from this. Let every decision I make be influenced by God. Every decision. Are you with me? Look, you can make a mistake. I told you this. But look, if that one mistake just leads you to another one, that leads you to another one, you need to check. God, what's going on? Matthew 16. I love this stuff. Verse 15. And he saith unto them, But whom say ye that I am? In case you forget what we're talking about. Ruth went into the field, Boaz's field, following the reapers, which allowed her to follow him, right? Are you with me? It's a people who are following 
Boaz in his field, not any other field, Boaz's field. Are you all right? And that field, because he's a kinsman redeemer or he's a kinsman of Emelech, it's a picture of kingdom, which is he's king and lord over everything, over the field, over the church, over his people. All right? Watch this. Who they say that I am. And Simon Peter answered and said, Thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. Watch this. And Jesus answered and said unto him, Blessed art thou, Simon Barjona, for flesh and blood has not revealed this to you, but my Father which is in heaven. Here's my verse. And I, and I say also unto you that thou art Peter. And upon this rock, Christ, I will build my church. Did you hear that? He didn't say, I'll build a church. He said, I'll build my church. How does it become his church, Corey? When he's king and Lord. Are you with me? King and Lord, I will build my church. This is what Boaz was saying. This is my field. This is what Jesus was saying. This is my. How do I know that these are my reapers? My reapers are doing what I say to them. Are you with me? What I've given them. Look, the Bible says, and, and I'm not trying to get you off in some context of what the whole thing. But look, at when he returns, this is when I return, who will I find faithful? You've been faithful with your money? You've been faithful with your time? You've been faithful with your talents, your treasures? Oh, wait, I am faithful. No, see, that's the point. We think we are. But he said, who will we find faithful? He's after something, isn't he? Look, we already know this. Jesus gave plenty of examples how, look, there were servants always doing things in the field, trying to take care of themselves, right? Giving debts, forgetting debts, all those kinds of You know all the stories, right? But look at in Boaz's field. Our heavenly Boaz has reapers that only are submitted because he's Lord and King over their lives. Well, how come you won't do that? Jesus is my King. Do you mean you don't drink because it's the rules and the regulations of church? No, he's my king. He's after a faithful priesthood. Are you with me? Watch, they don't get drunk in the night. They don't fall asleep because they're drunk. And don't make me modernize that for the church. The church is asleep. It's nighttime. Are you with me? They'll call what is bad good and what is good bad. Yeah. This is my church. Watch this. And the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. I love this. The power of death will not be able to defeat my church. Did you hear that? Watch. A gate doesn't attack, does it? You have to attack it. And the gates of hell will not be able to stand with the onslaught of an end time harvester company who have worked in his field, who have gleaned in his field, who have eaten, ate the mature corn of the land. Are you with me? Watch. They eat something that was better than angels' food. A raven can feed us. Oh, hallelujah. I thank God for that. A widow woman can feed us. Oh, hallelujah. I thank God. But when the angel comes and feeds us, the angel of the Lord, it moves you in a whole other dimension of what God is after. End time harvesters. Submitted, hungry for the fullness of the field's bounty. Amen. I will build my Church, all right? My church. Watch this. The church is his. It's not mine. It's not yours. The church is his. He owns the field. 
He owns the field. It's his church. Now watch this. Inside the church, turn with me to Ephesians chapter 4. You ready? Verse 11. And he gave some apostles and some prophets and some evangelists and some pastors and teachers for what? For the perfecting or the maturing, right, of the saints, for the work of the ministry, for the building, for for the edifying or building, but I like this word, for the growing up. For the growing up of the body of Christ. So the body can mature, so it can grow up. Look, it's not only his church, it's his ministries. He owns them. Right? He's the king. He's the Lord. He's the one that owns the church and the ministry. My church, and inside of my field, look, this is the kind of harvest that is to be produced. It's unfortunate that most folks have taken this section and all all they really, they love positions. And this is what we have in most of our church system we have, especially in America. And we like to spread it abroad. There's no doubt about it. All God ever wanted was, if we read the rest of this, till we all come in the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God, Unto a what? Perfect man. Unto the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ. His field. Everybody say this with me. His field. His church. My church. Amen. His reapers. His ministry. Is it not so? Yeah, is it not so? Hallelujah. And the reason for that, watch this. We're, no, we're so nonchalant about this. He owns it all. We have the knowledge of that. Watch, watch this. We have the knowledge that he owns my bank book. But yet we'll go out and spend it any way we want. We'll even cheat him whenever we think. And then we'll justify it just to satisfy our own flesh. I always loved the story of my dad wanting a Corvette for years and years and years, and every time he went to get one, the Lord would always tell him, no. And he was always obedient. Are you with me? I told you, before I ever added on to my house, two years I watched, I prayed. Minding my own business at work one day, and I heard the Lord say, and whatever you do, I'll bless it. And all he was really trying to get you and I to understand, watch, get me to understand, is that we would have an ear to be submitted to his voice, to obey. Watch, that my soul, wife, be submitted to him, the husband. Are you with me? And we have here in our lifestyle everything that contradicts that, and we wonder why we have mass shootings. See, what's it matter if you're the mass shooter or you're the victim? It's still Adam either way. It's still not God's field, is it? And all God ever wanted was a people that acknowledge him, not just with words, but with a life. Are you with me? As Lord and King. Lord and King. I find it, I would find it hard to, no, I, I would, if I asked the question, it would be hard to find people who are visiting all kinds of churches across our country today if that Jesus wasn't their Lord and King. And yet we're a church world system that is only great in our own mind.
the inhabitants of the world have not fallen. Ruth was hungry and submitted because she wanted him to be Lord and King of her life. It's a whole different field. It's a whole different world. Orpah wanted just a little bit of God, but not enough to change her life. Naomi wanted a little bit more of God, but not enough to really be, watch this, married or submitted to him. Amen? Are you with me? I'm glad some of you are. Hallelujah. Are you with me? It all belongs to him. It all belongs to him. Glory to God. Here we go. Verse 4. And behold, I love this. Behold. I think this is cool. Behold. What he's saying to us right here, Corey, is this. Watch. And behold, or behold, pay attention. There's revelatory knowledge right here. In what I'm about to say, behold. Behold is supposed to get our attention, isn't it? Does it waken up something inside of me? Behold, God is going to speak. Watch this. Boaz came from Bethlehem. How cool is that? Turn with me to Micah, chapter 5. I think this is, I, I love this personally. Verse 2, are you, are you ready? Micah, chapter 5, verse 2. But thou, Bethlehem, Ephratah, thou be little among the thousands of Judah, yet out of thee shall come forth unto me that is to be ruler in Israel whose goings forth, I love this, have been from old, from everlasting, or even from eternity. Now, we know this, and I'm way ahead of myself, but look, look at, this is a picture of Jesus. Where, where did he come from? What little town? Bethlehem. But what he's really trying to get you and I to understand, look, where did Boaz come from? He came from Bethlehem. What God's really trying to get you and I to understand that he's getting a people who come from the house of bread, the mature corn of the word. They come, watch, out of a place where no one would expect. Look, we can look at it in type right here. Little dinky church nobody cares about. Uh, maybe you don't even care about it. You think it's, uh, you know, a, a dumpy town and the whole works and poor I told you this people when I first started working down in Detroit poor Pee, Pee was our nickname I never even heard it I grew up here because this is what the outside looks at this is how they look at watch this the house of bread you know why so many Christians spend all their time trying to fit in with everybody else the embarrassment of the house of bread You know why they spend all their time doing everything else in the rest of their lives? Never understanding that the house of bread is where, watch this, Jesus comes from, Boaz comes from, watch this, a corporate people will come from. They come from Bethlehem, the house of bread. This is where, look, Corey, how can you become mature on bread if you don't come from the house of bread? if you're not living in the house of bread. Awake, O Zion, out of thy slumber, for the Lord has set us free. Our problem is, is we think we're not sleeping. We think we're awake because we know something. We're no different than Naomi. We'll sit in here and it'll be dull silence for an hour and 15 minutes. And as soon as church turns off, you turn on. 
will make more noise than you can shake a stick at from such a small crowd. And all God ever wanted was a people to make a noise for him. Are you with me? Follow the reapers. Boaz's reapers. Out of Bethlehem, the smallest town of all of Judah. Watch the smallest house. Better yet, watch the smallest family. Better yet, let me take it, a remnant. Not everybody will go into Boaz's field being submitted or hungry. There might be people who will try to get in, but what did Jesus say? There's a lot of thieves and robbers that try to come what up another way. Amen? And by the way, what, was it Nathaniel? What did Nathaniel say? Can anything good come from Bethlehem? Can anything good come from poor Huron? Can anything good come from, are you with me, the house of bread? I love these correlations. The only reason God even allows us to be in these situations or correlations is because he's really trying to get you and I to understand, look, I'm trying to bring you to maturity. This thing's bigger than what you see. It's bigger than what you hear. It's bigger than what you understand. It's my providence. It's my sovereignty that I've led you into this place for this purpose. Are you with me? Boaz. I find it interesting that Boaz and Jesus came out of the smallest town, but yet they were kings, leaders. I like the Song of Solomon where it says, Behold, who is this one that comes up out of the wilderness? Obscurity. Are you all right? Here we go. Boaz came from Bethlehem and watches and said to the reapers, Boaz speaks in his field. He doesn't go to somebody else's field and talks in it. Boaz speaks in his own field field. Are you with me? He said to the reapers, right? The reapers are those with a vision of evangelism. Watch, not 21st century Christian evangelism. Evangelism of an end time harvest. That people use the same words, but I guarantee you the definition is totally different. A people who've been tried and tested, who have overcome, who have walked through the furnace of affliction, that the sufferings of this present time aren't worthy to be compared. Or watch this. You ready? That the, if you want to reign with him, what do you have to do? What's that? Kind of the opposite message of the modern day church. Nobody wants process. Everybody wants Presence, blessings. Being a real joint of supply means giving of yourself, not taking. That's why Paul wrote in another place, it's better to what? Give than to receive. Ah, uh, yes, here we go. Hallelujah. The reapers, right? The reapers. They have, an, they have a, a vision, right? Their vision is to change the world. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. So look, he comes and he talks, doesn't he? The Lord, look what he says, the Lord be with you. I also like the fact that Boaz initiated the conversation, not the reapers. I think it shows a submissiveness. Yes, Lord, whatever you say. He's the one who comes from the house of bread, isn't it? He's the one who comes and he says, peace be with you. He's the one, isn't he? He's the one who speaks into our lives, hallelujah, that we can be that join of supply, hallelujah. We also know this, the testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy, Revelation 19. Turn with me. We'll go real quick. Hmm. 
verse 10, and you, you have to go read all this, but uh, look, he says, And I fell at his feet to worship him. And he said unto me, See thou do it not, I am thy fellow servant, and of thy brethren that have the testimony of Jesus. Worship God, for the testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy, because the truth of Jesus is the spirit of but God, we, 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 we settled this the other day. We've been actually settled for a long time. But the word settled it. He's the firstborn of what? Many brethren. Boaz wants you to be just like him. Yeah. Watch this. His name is higher than what? Any other name. Watch. His nature, his character, and his authority. You know what authority is really for? To carry out the nature and the character no matter what else is going on. Took more power, right? Authority to stay on a cross. To follow out the Father's will. To carry it out, right? Yeah, the spirit of of prophecy is the testimony of Jesus. Amen. The word of the Lord, right? The Lord be with you. The word of the Lord, all right? The voice of the bridegroom. Prophetic or anointed utterance is symbolized by the trumpet. We've already, I like that. You know, how I feel about that. Let your voice be like a trumpet. I'm constantly saying that, isn't it? Hallelujah. I also say this. If Boaz is willing to initiate communication or communion with us, let's not reject it. It might be an inconvenience time or moment for us. But the reason he speaks is for his purpose to bring about the kingdom of God and change everything. Watch. You know, I I tell you, I I was reading, and you know, ever since I've had this pain in my back and down my leg, and and you know, I guess thinking about this, no more pain, no more sorrow, no more death, right? And so I looked up the word pain in those contexts, uh, in the context of Revelation, and it has to do with, watch this, earth pains. And all of a sudden I had a new understanding I never saw before when he talks about no more pain, no more sorrow, no more death. Watch, when a man child or a perfect man or a corporate man is birthed, it eliminates all those aspects of human life. I don't have to worry about birth pains, right? Because the mama, right? The mama, I, I know we don't like this, but Rachel died because why? There was no more need for another son. The system that we know will no longer be needed, right? Coming to church, you sitting here being bored, me preaching to myself. Are you with me? We won't need this because I told you if, if, if any good preacher does his job over the course of time and whoever picks up the baton for the next generation over time, if they do their job, this system comes to an end. And watch this. If you don't think it will come to an end for you, just go visit a cemetery. You're cruel, you're harsh, you're... Look, I'm just trying to wake us up. Because you want to know what? It's only the mercy and the grace of God. And someone would say, well, how come they didn't get it? The mercy and the grace of God that you don't go shopping and never come home. Corey had to go to something last night. I couldn't even imagine when Danielle told me about it the other day that a lady he works with, his 12-year-old son, And his cousin, on a go-kart, on a Volca trail, decides to skip through the stop sign. And a car hit them at 55 miles an hour. Anybody see a deer on the road before? They got hit by a car? That could be your babies. Not trying to scare us. I'm not trying to do any of that kind of thing. All I'm trying to get you and I to understand is, look, God is after a mature people. 
they follow his reboots. They let him initiate communion with him, them, so that they can respond. This is what they do. Do you see that? Uh, I'm almost done here. Hear my heart today. If you judge me for based upon your own mentality and your own attitudes, you've missed what God is really after. Hear my heart that God is after. He sovereignly put us in this place for his purpose. He's after his purpose. Are you with me? Let's not like me or but turn the back. We don't even have to leave this place to turn the back. We can sit right in the pew and turn the back, turn off our ears, let our own conscience lead our way. Help me, Jesus. Are you with me? The Lord be with you. And they answered him, the Lord bless thee. He initiates communion. The reapers answered. They say a word to him and blessed him. Bless, praised him, thanked him. Salutations to him. Look, they wished him well. In other words, when you're wishing God well, this is what you're wishing. I'm no, I don't mean wishful thinking. I mean, in the sense of, look, my hope and expectation, I wish, I pray, that everything that you desire, you get. Are you with me? Don't you want God to get everything that he has purposed? And look, the creation groans, doesn't he? But you know what the center of God's creation is? I love watching planet Earth stuff. It's so cool. I, I see God's fingerprints in everything. I love it. I was watching one last night, and they got these big old holes. At first, when they show it from the sky, it looks like these like raindrops drop down on the ground, and they don't know where they came from. But they're big because they have like ostriches walking through them and everything. It's in the Kalahari. Yeah, the Kalahari. And it's like... And yet in the center of all of God's creation is man. When God came down to the earth, he didn't come down to the earth as any other thing but a man. Mankind. And I love how God killed the gender aspect of humans. He pulled a woman out of a man, but he makes a man come out of a woman. He's so cool. He's so disrupting to Adam's mindset. He loves us so much that he allows the nonsense to continue. He's long-suffering and patient because he desires that no one should perish, but every one of us come to repentance, change. Change from my way to his way. Hallelujah. I like the fact that he initiated contact or communion. They responded because watch this. The relationship is mutual. Watch. That means, Corey, if he initiates contact with me and I don't respond to him, the relationship is not reciprocal. It's one-sided. Once he sovereignly brings us into his field, we must respond to him. More than God is good, God is great, thank you for this food. More than I lay me down to sleep. But watch this, that speaking in tongues or that intimate love relationship language. That builds an individual so that they can grow up in a body. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Ruth was led by the Spirit to a local assembly where she was, where there she she found praise and worship and a spiritual ministry through the manifestations of the Spirit. Right? It is a church where the saints call unto him in worship. And he answers them by a prophetic word. Hallelujah. It is a congregation, watch this, that is God-centered and not man-centered.
You know what happens when we stop holding up the head? I think Paul wrote that into the church Corinthians, right? They stopped holding up the head. Not in words, but in actions. It must be God-centered instead of man-centered. That must be our focus, right? They're more interested in his presence, right? This church, our church, we must be more interested in his presence than his blessings, okay? I like this. The bottom line is, we have to love Jesus for who he is and not what he does for us or what he will do for us. Just simply for who he is. Are you with me? We must love him. With What is the most important commandment? To love the Lord. We're, we do well quoting it, don't we? Hallelujah. Glory to God. Let's stand. I want you to, I'm going to read one verse. Psalms 103 verse 7 says this, He made known his ways to Moses, his acts unto the children of Israel. You know what that means? The children of Israel always got to see his actions, but they never understood the motive behind them. All they cared about was, look, give us quail, give us water, give us this, give us that. They only cared about his actions. Give us peace, give us safety, give us your love. And they never understood Moses knew his ways, his ways, his motives. They only knew his actions. Loving Jesus for who he is is far weightier than loving Jesus and thanking him for what he does. Help us, Jesus. I I don't know. Listen, Ruth followed the reapers. Uh, let me rephrase. Ruth followed Boaz by following his reapers, by being only in his field. And out of that, Boaz, I wish I would have thought of this before. I'm glad he just gave it to me. Watch. Boaz always comes to his field. Now, did you hear what he really just said? He always comes to his church. He always comes to his people. Watch this. I don't believe that. That's not true. You go down to Jerusalem and you wait there till I show up. And look, at after the 10 days of sifting out more than 120 people were in that upper room, only 120 endured to the moment. Stay focused. Stay the course. Stay put. Amen. Father, we thank you for your word. Ah, this is so good, God. Thank you for your life and your spirit. Help us, Jesus. It's more than a message, God. It's a reality. It's a person. It's who you are. You are the Prince of Peace. You give us tranquility in the midst of trouble, oh God, the day of darkness. In the earth, God, it's day and night at the same time. So let us arise, awaken to who you are, Father, that we may see the full reality. Let us cry out. Let us groan within ourselves, Father, for the manifestation, the fullness, the mature corn, the word made flesh. We love you, Jesus. We praise you. We declare this word upon your authority and your character out of your nature, that the life of who you are will be manifested in each and every one of us, in Jesus' name. And everybody says, amen, hallelujah.